Hey everyone, it's Wednesday, February 29th. It's leap year. It's leap year. So if you have a birthday, happy 7th or 14th or whatever it may be uh, today, but we've got an extra day in the year and let's use it to the best of our abilities. Let's get healthy. We are joined today by Sylvia Tarnazer of RVHealthy.com. This is RVNN Live brought to you in part by Pet Hub and GoToMeeting. Today's program brought to you by Pet Hub. Protect your pet for pennies a day with critical contact, medical, and dietary information on a smartphone scannable ID tag. And by GoToMeeting, affordable online meetings that work so you can do more and travel less. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Leap Day, which doesn't come all too often. Andy, you know what? I think we were supposed to wear blue and yellow, and I totally didn't. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm distracted because I'm looking at uh, at our guest site over here, yeah. and there's some luscious burgers and you're liking what like you're tacos. Seeing. Yeah, I'm liking <laughs> what I'm seeing. Well, great. And uh, that is a great uh, segue to talk about who our guest is. It's Sylvia Tarnazer of RVHealthy.com. Sylvia, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us. And, you know, I stumbled upon you via Twitter, and I appreciate you outreaching to us. And uh, we went I went to your website, was instantly intrigued. You've got a uh, great background in health and wellness. And uh, let's talk a little bit about your history and uh, how you ended up with RV Healthy. Okay. Well, RV Healthy came along while I was a Weight Watchers leader. And I have helped so many people in the past lose hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And I was at one of our rallies. And one of the Eastern reps that was um, in charge of the rally came up to me and said, why isn't somebody doing what you do at these rallies? We'd like to stay on the road longer, and we need to know how to do it in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. And that just got my wheels turning. And it took about a year and a half of a lot of thought process and going out there to see if somebody was doing what I was doing. And there wasn't. And I thought, wow, this is something I'm passionate about. Absolutely. I love being in a motor home. I love learning and teaching how to stay healthy. And we can do it longer. Mm -hmm. So RV Healthy came into fruition. Absolutely. Well, you know, we talk about uh, camping food and immediately you think of, of hot dogs and s'mores and all the things that you remember, kind of the comfort food from when you, when you were a kid. But uh, I think, and a lot of it I think is justified with, with quick something that you can quick get people fed so they can get back to the pool or, or whatever whatever how do you balance uh the, the the need for speed so to speak with a, a healthy way of eating on the road you know that's a great question and that's a question that's asked often and one of the things that i like to say is i'm going to help you with 10 or 20 of my most um talked about pantry items and you talk about hot dogs there's choices in hot dogs that you could that you could change from the hot dog that you're eating and cut some of the calories and quite honestly a lot of the junk out of them. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of just making some small changes and those changes that I really work on are the changes such as lowering your sodium count, improving cholesterol, um, you know, lowering calories. How can you still have those fun foods, if you will, in a healthier format? I think, I mean, obviously this is applicable to everyone. You've got a great background of, uh, you know, you're a certified wellness coach and all that uh, good work with um, Weight Watchers. I'm looking at some of these recipes. Andy, are you checking them out I, too? I We're am. both kind of drooling I over am. here. Yes. It's almost lunchtime for us. Uh, one I clicked <laughs> on was the Cajun shrimp pasta. And, you know, shrimp's healthy, but pasta is something that I think, um, A, it's easy to make in the RV, but B, it's one of those things that you said it's, it's easy to make, but sometimes you add that sauce and it completely negates any health or anything that'll help you really lose weight, all those carbs. I'm seeing some great pasta dishes, some pizza, uh, good stuff. You're not depriving yourself at all to no. be healthy. There's no deprivation in being healthy is making the changes and making the choice. Wellness is a choice. Mm -hmm. And when we realize that and we know why we're doing it, and quite honestly, for me, wellness became a choice when I started to get a little bit older. Um, I wanted to be around for my husband, for my children, and now my grandchildren. Yeah. 
And then motorhoming came into play and I want to be healthier so that I could have fun on the road with the friends that we've made throughout our journeys in our motorhome travels. But quite honestly, the pastas, again, you can make healthier choices with the pastas. What you've seen in some of those recipes is a product that I brought into um, my life about a year ago, which is Wild Tree. And without going too deep into the Wild Tree line, one of the things that I've that I have um, really loved about it is my husband has put down the salt shaker after 33 years of marriage and trying to get him with he has high blood pressure trying to get him off of salt at the table. He has finally done that, and it's because it's chemical free product. It tastes wonderful. Hmm. That's interesting. I know a lot of people struggle with the salt. I'm, yeah. I've never, I, thank goodness, now I have other vices. Uh, I have not been one to add salt. However, chips and things are my favorite, so it's probably no better. Um, but that's great. That'll extend so much more. And one thing I liked when you I went, uh, immediately went to your website, you talked about, you know, the, the lifestyle of RVing is so contagious. And we were kind of talking about how you and your husband were tent camping, and then you moved to a trailer, and now you're spoiled. You've got the, the motor home, and it's a contagious lifestyle, and you want to do it for as long as you can. And unfortunately, you see a lot of people stopping you know, doing the RV lifestyle because of their health. And uh, you are going to prolong that activity for everyone. uh, And this is a great way to start. So you talked about doing this at rallies and events and you're not there yet, but this, the website is your hub where they can get information, the recipes, even coaching. Correct. What I, what I'm doing is I'm bringing RV healthy out there to the world, the RV world. But I don't want to exclude, I'm talking RV being, it can be anywhere from camping in a tent to a travel trailer to a motorhome. And yes, we do have a motorhome now, and a lot of the rallies are travel trailers and motorhomes. But there are things that we can do, even activities I can share with you that are simple, that you can do in a small, um, challenging place. The products that are in our pantries that we can do to to create a healthier lifestyle, uh, we have to make sure that they all fit within our pantries and small refrigerators. But yes, it's just bringing that on the road. And quite honestly, a lot of people in the motorhomes, what I've recognized is they buy their first motorhome and they're already at retirement age. Mm -hmm. We really need to extend that because we want them on the road a lot longer than just a few years. So how do we do that? We get them healthy if they're not there yet. We keep them healthy with some great ideas and and coaching that I can do with them that's simple. It's coaching that works for them. There's a lot of weight loss products out there, a lot of weight loss companies out there, but I work with their challenges, their day-to-day lifestyle, their items they need to have changed behavior-wise. And I love the fact that I've also um, have expertise in the psychology of food because sometimes we need additional experience with how do we handle food and emotions with well, with the challenges. Well, one of, one of the phrases that kind of jumps out at me here on your site is you talk about how you te- teach people how to organize your pantry, your refrigerator, and your overall outlook. Now, the outlook, the, sci- the psychological part of it. But what element does, does arrangement or organizing your fridge play in, in this? Well, think this thought with me. If I brought in things like chocolate chip cookies, potato chips, um, full-blown sugared sodas, and put those in my refrigerator or pantry, what might I fall to if I was in a real hungry stage. You're going to grab the first thing that when you open that door. That's correct. So the first thing I do is what can I do to put into or what can I purchase to put into my pantry? What can I what changes can I make if I am a diet soda drinker, if I am a carbonated, you know, full-blown sugared soda drinker? What are those small changes that I can make? And people I can, honestly, a lot of people have asked me about alcohol. If I still want to drink beer, if I want to still have wine, can I do that? And the answer is yes. But how can I cut the calories? How can I cut it down and still make it to where I'm, I'm, I'm lowering my calorie count 
and creating a healthier me. Hmm. Very interesting. You know, I was actually just looking yesterday at something and if you don't deal with this, that's totally fine. I'm not putting you on the spot here, but it was one of those things that said, if you crave salt, you're lacking this. If you crave carbonated beverages or even if they went down to the alcohol, you're lacking this. And I struggle, like I said, with salty foods and, and uh, diet soda. Um, I'm stopping that tomorrow. Today is my last day with diet soda. <laughs> it's done. Um, but it was all uh, calcium, actually, which uh, would make sense that I crave those things. So I'm actually lactose intolerant. And so my milk intake and in calcium is kind of low. So maybe that's why I crave those things. <laughs> well, and, the, and what I want to work with people on, and you see on my website, there's a, a couple of people that have given me testimonials yeah. that both have lost over 100 pounds. Yep with me and one of the things that I like to work on are those things that how can we make small changes everything is in baby steps you're not going to be able to cut something out entirely and possibly be successful it, you may but it's much more difficult let's mm -hmm. put it that way. it's much more difficult so where can we make the small changes yep. and that's what I work with that individual on each person is so different so we work with the individual in their world. So it, so it looks like you've got, uh, kind of in summary, uh, you've got the world of RVs uh, pretty much covered from the, from the full-up Class A full-timer uh, down to the uh, towable weekender or the tent, uh, tent camper as well. And there's a kind of a common thread that runs through, through all of them in uh, managing their health. That is correct. Everybody out there, you know, wants to stay out there. People that are in these campgrounds absolutely love it, and they want to stay there. They want to stay healthy, and I want to work with them in order to keep us on the road, keep us healthy in those campgrounds, and any campsite in particular, because it's quite fun. If you haven't done it, for those that are maybe watching this that are just thinking about it, it is contagious. Mm -hmm. And so let's do it in a healthy way. I'm not there yet, but I'm going to extend my life here and I'm going to get healthier. Uh, Sylvia, thank you so much. And so we're not, we're not dieting. We're just changing to a healthier lifestyle, which will inevitably um, be easier to do. And so where can they find you? I know you're uh, all over the social media and uh, your website. Why don't you go ahead and tell people where they can find you and, and get in touch? Okay. My website is www.rvhealthy.com. You can also find me on Facebook. So it's the facebook.com forward slash RV healthy. And I'm also on Twitter and you can follow me on Twitter. Okay. And a YouTube channel as well. Sylvia, thanks very much for joining us and I uh, wish you the, the best. Hope to hear from you again. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it, Andy and Courtney. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, great. Well, words to, words to live by. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, she was talking about the salt shaker, and I've got uh, years, years of experience pouring that on, and uh, that's uh, particularly hard, I think, to back off from. Yeah. I The Diet Coke. Let's ask me tomorrow how that's going. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you need a day or two off here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll kind of make sure you have uh, plenty of coffee or, yeah. or, or, or I something I think I'm going to switch to tea. Andy's switch gonna to say, tea. you know what, Courtney? Why don't you go home? You're kind of unbearable today. That's what it'll probably turn into. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Hey, it's time for 30 seconds. Uh, time for the rundown here. It is. I just want to remind you, we've got lots of great things out there, and uh, one thing that's uh, pretty new is our RVNN Daily. It's a little newspaper that's got a lot of our contributors out there in the social media world. So be sure to go and subscribe to that. Uh, we've got the link in the show notes. Of course, we are on Pinterest and uh, lots of fun things going on there. We've got all uh, of our shows have a different board and uh, each of our members here do as well. So be sure to follow them all because there's great and interesting things for anyone in the RV lifestyle. Uh, we're also on Google Plus, of course. And uh, don't forget that we are I don't know how you could forget, but we're now in the uh, Roku channel store. So uh, we are under the outdoor and fitness section and uh, you can subscribe and be sure to give us a rating. We'd really, really appreciate that as well. Andy, uh, one of our sponsors is uh, Pet Hub and they've been running a contest that we've been talking about. And uh, instead of us talking about it, we've been showing these videos. Now this one, I have to warn you, you might want to get the tissue out. Okay. So it's a more dramatic. This is a tearjerker. This is uh, maybe not boy. a tearjerker, but it's just more dramatic more dramatic it's, so yes, I have no to pay, words have to pay attention yes. no words so here it is
All right, you see what I'm talking about? It was the music. It was a dramatic music, yeah, but very yeah, well done. Exactly. Bravo. And, and really kind of describes uh, the way that Pet Hub helps uh, pet owners get uh, reunited with a pet in case that they've gone, uh, you know, lost or strayed or uh, just uh, disconnected from, uh, from their owners. Mm -hmm. So uh, go to PetHub.com, check it out, and please use RVN20 as the, uh, as the order code, and you'll save 20% mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, one of the finalists, so be sure to go over there and vote. I think it uh, goes on until March 4th. And it's time for our RV business headlines. It is, it is indeed. And uh, this, of course, uh, courtesy of our friends at RVBusiness.com, which is a business publication, but you know, from time to time there are things that are of interest to consumers, so we want to try and pick out one or two of the, uh, of the articles. Got two fairly lengthy ones uh, here today. Uh, first one's talking about how baby boomers have altered the demographics of snowbirding. Snowbirds, of course, people that head to uh, Florida or uh, Texas and warm climbs in the winter. But uh, the sound that you hear is decreasingly big band music, and it's being replaced by Beatles and Clearwater and Foreigner, Rolling Stones, and so forth. Activities, there's still shuffleboard and bridge tables, but you have water aerobics and water volleyball and playing tennis and so forth, and you could say that the baby boomers have, in fact, uh, arrived. A typical uh, location, Golden Village Palms RV Resort in Hemet, California, has over 200 activities. It's uh, really uh, pretty much the activity you would have in a small city. A lot of you RVers actually pick these resorts based on concerts and events. And then some are also offering on-site wellness centers, spas, uh, et cetera. Um, Sun and Fun RV Resort in Sarasota uh, reported that uh, business is way up uh, in this particular segment, 20% increase in RV site rentals and 27% increase in park model rentals. And uh, that particular uh, park uh, totally booked up here through uh, February and uh, in the month of March. This is also being reflected in some changes at KOA. You know, KOA uh, had uh, their uh, founding about uh, 50 years ago, uh, almost exactly 50 years ago, when they noticed that uh, people uh, were going to the Seattle World's Fair, 1962. And uh, he had a, a nice piece of property in Billings, Montana, and so basically he offered people a place to stay for the night for $1.75. But uh, the focus had been on opening campgrounds along busy highways and giving uh, campers a, uh, giving travelers a place to rest and, uh, as they were on their way to a tourist attraction or a particular resort. But what's happening now is that KOA is in a transformation. Um, you know, Los Angeles Times is reporting uh, Ventura Ranch Campgrounds, uh, which is a KOA site. Uh, they're adding new lodges. They're adding upscale teepees two 800-foot zip lines and uh, park and uh, water slide. And so what they're doing is instead of offering a rest stop on the way to a destination, uh, KOA and others are uh, uh, converting these uh, overnight campgrounds into final destinations for families uh, themselves. And these are full-up cable television, uh, microwaves, uh, flat-screen TVs, internet access, uh, swimming pools, bicycle rentals, and so forth. Uh, the phrase that they had, the uh, world wants to get outdoors, but they also want a hot shower and a clean bed and a cold beer. So mm -hmm. KOA is not uh, the only one. Uh, the folks behind the Yogi Bear Jellystone Parks have been installing furnished cabins at a rapid pace at the 78 franchise campgrounds that they have. 40, almost 43 million people over the age of six, 15% of Americans regularly go camping, either in tents or in uh, in RVs. Very good. Hey, I, I am uh, ready to go to one of those. Check it out. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, the zip lines. Yeah, yeah zip that's lines. cool. That's very cool. There, oh, you don't, uh, I had one more. Are you... <laughs> uh, the, I, the one more didn't get, didn't get printed oh, out. Oh, that's okay. That's yeah. okay. I was just waiting and didn't want to wait <laughs> if it wasn't there. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump into our social media topics then, I guess. That's uh, my cue. And uh, let me bring up here, of course, we're all over the place. And uh, some of those newer places I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, this is something I tweeted out this week. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter at RV Newsnet. And uh, this is from the Fun Times Guide. And this is talking about uh, the ever so th uh, thing that I would probably completely avoid but might be really hard to do, considering you're RVing all across the United States, is... Uh, is uh, 
doing something that won't come up here, um, mountain driving. And uh, that, to me, would be really scary. And we, we've heard <laughs> a lot of uh, horror stories about driving up and down, both up and then you've got to go down. And uh, both have their complications. Both have their uh, safety issues. And if you're not familiar with driving that way, you need to be because you could have a real big mess there. And uh, it may not be safe. So... This is from the Fun Times Guide, and uh, Andy, do you have a pulled I'm, up? My I'm computer's trying, being I'm a little to, obnoxious. Mine is being, uh, they're, they're birds of a feather here as far as uh, being yeah. able to pull this, uh, pull this site up. We're not having much luck. So anyways, uh, this will be, oh, there. Ah, uh, oh, see, mine oh, said no. that too. So yeah, um, er, File not found. Yeah. I'm so not we'll, sure what's, uh, what's going on here. I'll make sure the right one is in the show notes. So yeah. this is live TV, people. Uh, that's always our excuse. Yeah, just, just, because, just because the right one's not in the script. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, okay. so well, I will we'll make sure that the uh, the correct link gets put there. So anyways, uh, that's something that was tweeted out. But a really interesting article, again, um, not burning out your brakes. <laughs> uh, something, you know what, I just drive straight and I tend to burn out my brakes uh, pretty easily. So I'm, I'm assuming that you can do it even easier in a large RV driving up and down mountains. I so don't avoid could, them. Yes. And uh and do it and use those tips there. So uh, this is another thing. Andy, I don't know if you knew this, but yesterday was National Pancake Day. And uh, I was craving pancakes so incredibly badly, which let me just preface this. I don't need pancakes. I'm not a pancake person. But yesterday <laughs> with all the pictures and recipes that people had out there, I wanted a blueberry pancake, something fierce. And uh, KOA had a really interesting recipe that they, uh, convenient that they, we had a story about them today. Um, and this is cool because uh, this is yummy, cool, yummy, Baked same thing. Pancakes. Baked pancakes. Now, Andy, yes. this has got sausage, which, you know, a lot of people do the sausage syrup pancake thing and it all gets mixed around anyways. So uh, you brown the sausage and while the sausage is browning, uh, you mix up the eggs and all that good stuff, and then you pour the batter on top of the sausage. So why, why <laughs> you know, let's just skip the whole uh, slicing up the sausage and then putting it on the fork together. We're going to do this, and uh, KOA has a, a really good re recipe here in honor of uh, Pancake Day that was yesterday. So I know, um, you know, when I was younger, we took a trip in elementary school about how to make pancakes at the campfire, mm -hmm. and we took a high C can. Remember those oh old yeah, yeah. high C cans? Yeah. And we turned it into a little burner. Okay. And that's instantly what I thought of was this recipe that would you could use on, on that little burner. But, of course, you'd probably have something a little bit nicer, either your RV or uh, some nice cookware for your campfire. You probably won't be using high C. I think that was for more <laughs> learning and third grade things. I, uh, I, I think so. <laughs> but it uh, looks like there's uh, something else going on here that involves one of our hosts. It does. It does. And uh, this is a free book uh, download from uh, Techno RV, and you want to be able to, you want to do this. Um, a, it's free, and B, it's good. Uh, this is uh, uh, Phil May from our show, Gadgetplex, and he is, of course, a part of Techno RV. Do you have that up on I've yours? I've got it up over okay. here on the, uh, on the screen. There There's we go. that. This is uh, Phil's book, um, and it's not coming up here, and I don't want to butcher high the tech, uh, high no, tech. I've, I've got it right here. Yeah, high tech to high planes, mm -hmm. uh, from high tech to high planes, and of course, uh, Phil. Uh, was uh, working for HP for quite a while, uh, him and his wife both, correct? Yeah, I think so. And uh, they kind of said, um, we're going to change something here. And he is actually from uh, the UK. So this is an Englishman's RV journey across America, discover himself and his family. And, um, and, and of course, his, his kids now are, are teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so uh, they've had uh, quite an experience uh, as full-timers now. I guess this is the fifth year. Yeah. And they do school and everything on the road and just a really, really neat family. And I think that it would be hard to walk away um, just for the, what's the word I'm looking here? The um, vein, kind of the vanity of, of staying at a job like that. It's probably good money. Mm -hmm. Having that kind of lifestyle and then choosing to do this. And, and I'm sure in that book, it just shows you family is more important you know if these things that you're experiencing and, and we've had phil here talk about rving is completely th their kids have experienced things that I, w I will never probably experience in my lifetime and they are you know 18 years old so right, just right. cool so i'm sure this book's great and it is a free download yes that's the uh, the, the important thing to uh, to, to recognize uh, so we'll have that link uh, in the show notes uh, here of, of course
Mm -hmm. But it looks like a little bit of uh, camping ingenuity yes. that uh, you have on your screen over there. Why don't you share that up? Yes, camping ingenuity. This is, uh, of course, our Pinterest portion of the show. It's something I pinned yesterday. Surprisingly, okay, I do my surprisingly, why hasn't this been repinned? Please repin to make me feel good. And then I, I show something that was repinned. This is my surprisingly wasn't repinned. You are surprised that this did not get repinned. Yeah. yeah. So do me a favor, repin this, make me feel good. Uh, but I wanted to share this either way, if you're on Pinterest or not. This is a great way to put your pancake batter uh, in your old ketchup bottle. And uh, they always say reuse something twice. This is a great way to get mm -hmm. a second use out of your ketchup bottle. And uh, if you're like me, Andy, I can't pour a good pancake. But 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 with your other story, the sausage is going to get stuck in the, <laughs> in the holder. <laughs> yeah, you can't quite put the sausage in there, but you could uh, <laughs> squeeze it over the sausage or you know, make it work that way. So that was something I wanted to share up, and I think that would be a, a good little idea for your uh, RV or uh, at your, your campfire. This is something that did get repinned a lot, and there's um, obviously a few reasons for that. I titled this uh, Thumbs Up for Geocaching with Your Pet. We know a lot of our geocachers out there uh, take their little pooches with, and if you, if you look at this pooch, uh, luckily it's on a leash, but that that little puppy dog is uh, pretty high up and not looking too fearful uh, at all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that is uh, what's known as a geo pup. Geo pup. That is a geo pup. And actually, if you click into this further, this is uh, actually from the geocaching.com blog. Mm -hmm. And uh, go in and read that because this is the featured geocache of the week. So another reason why this probably got repinned a lot. Yeah, it's a cute picture, and it's got a great story, and it shares the geocache of the week, which is overseas. So That is in Slovenia. Slovenia. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, wow, what what scenery, mm -hmm. what scenery associated uh, with uh, with that? Yes. And uh, you can see this is in fact Tupperware hidden in the woods, or in <laughs> this case, uh, hidden at a uh, mountaintop uh, location, mostly populated by eagles, I should think. Absolutely. You know, I I told you yesterday we I had a comment on one of our videos, and they said I, I didn't like that you said it's just Tupperware in the woods. So we apologize for that, um, but. Oftentimes it's oftentimes, more sophisticated. Yes, oftentimes it is more sophisticated, like a camo box or something. But it's just a fun little phrase we mm -hmm. pull out there. So anyways, uh, be sure to email me, cw at rvnn.tv, if you have any questions, comments, or something you'd like to share with me that I can share in this portion of the show. And uh, Andy, let's share with them about uh, a company, a product that we use and we'll probably that we use, use today. In fact, I have used uh, already today. Uh, already. Uh, working with uh, uh, Jeffrey Powers in uh, uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, go to meeting. Uh, Jeffrey and I were uh, working on some issues there uh, last night, some technical problems, and uh, uh, I texted him and uh, I said, "Hey, uh, can we go ahead and uh, and um, uh, and do some more testing?" And he texted back with the go to meeting access number, and yeah. so I recognized it immediately, and we came up and uh, connected, uh, you know, face to face, as it were, and then went on with our our, our technical uh, discussion. And uh, it was a great way to add um, a, a number of, uh, of capabilities. First of all, we could, we could connect directly, and uh, there was no cost for that, uh, for that call, for that video connection. Uh, secondly, uh, last evening when we were working on this, I was able to share my desktop and illustrate the, uh, the issues that we were having uh, on, on a uh, website and, and take a look at the code and, and so forth. And all of this was for one fee that uh, one monthly fee. You can meet as often as you want for as long as you need. And uh, if you go to gotomeeting.com and click on the Try It Free button. Which, what uh, color is it today? Uh, this is a kind of a, kind of a azure blue. <laughs> I don't know what it, it's a, it's a, it looks <laughs> like an ocean, or it looks like the, uh, a tropical beach kind of blue. Yes, okay, yeah. it's a blue button. <laughs> uh, try it free, click on that, and make sure you use the code podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, and for your free 30-day trial of Go to Meeting. Very good. Uh, Jeffrey Powers uh, also joined us in the Hangout last night for Geocaching World, so it was very kind of him. Yep. And uh, lo a local celeb, <laughs> we'll call it. Um, this is a portion of the show called uh, Travel App of the Day. Now, Andy, I have to preface this with, uh, and I'll probably get a few emails about this, I was uh, reluctant to share this app because I thought it was so general that I didn't mm -hmm. need to. And then Fromers went back and talked about the apps that you must have if you're traveling, and a lot of those are are flight based and things like that that our RVers don't have to deal with. Right. But this one, I thought, okay, they're telling me I need to I need to do this because I see it in every search that I do, and it's just a general free 
great, easy app to use, and it's a must-have. So it's called Around Me, and if you don't have it, uh, get it. It's free for uh, iOS devices. Now, if you have the iPod Touch and it doesn't have the GPS, um, if you cannot use GPS on that, right? If it you doesn't have the GPS receiver, right. um, it, um, how does it handle that? Uh, it, you can't use this app. Yeah, can't use you the just app can't on use the, the app unless you have some kind of uh, location GPS tracking. So, right, right. Uh, this is a great app, though. So, if uh, you want to know what hotels, movie theaters, whatever is nearby, it's really basic. Now, this might be appealing. It's also for iPad, of, of course, as well. But here's what's appealing, Andy. Um, you know, some of these plays, some of these apps that do the same thing that show you restaurants around you or whatever. This is probably a little broader of things mm -hmm. it shows you, even gas. Uh, but this does not give you reviews. Right. It's just so. it's just a listing. Yep. Just it's, a it's listing. Just a, just a listing. A little little bit of information, and uh, and so forth. But. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing about apps is you can get information from one and then uh, maybe you have an augmented reality uh, map mm -hmm. that uh, you can kind of see where you are relative to this other location and you know it, it gives you a clue that you can follow and, uh, and, and so forth. Very good. So maybe we could use all these apps together to make a mega app and then when I just discover how to, to develop apps, I'm going to make the mega app. That combines all of these. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Anyway, keep us posted. Yes. Uh, actually, I want to point out something here uh, in this in this little example here. It says Magnolia Bakery, which of course is in New York. Uh, Captain and Clark, they are in New York right now with Expedia, uh -huh. and uh, they are asking uh, if you have a place for them that they need to check out. It doesn't have to be somewhere to eat, uh, somewhere to to eat to to look at or see in New York. Uh, they will be there till the end of the week. So check them out. Uh, they are at Captain and Clark on Twitter and Facebook, of course. So I, I said Magnolia Bakery last night because they've got these fantastic cupcakes and you probably just need to do that while you're there. So I just thought I'd point that out. Exactly. So do you, have you, are you a New York kind of guy? Uh, you know, no, not particularly, but I see Slice the Perfect Food might uh, actually be a pizza place mm. and it's only 36 yards away. So uh Maybe Check we sh should tell them to just say, just use the Around Me app, and then you'll get all the all the answers you'd ever want. All the want. answers that you need. <laughs> all right. So uh, let's see here. Uh, publishing, of course, uh, besides today's live, we're going to have uh, last night's geocaching world where we talked about extreme geocaching. And if you, for one second, thought that geocaching was an easy sport or a hobby, think again, watch the show, and uh, you'll be proven wrong. There's a reason <laughs> that these are like difficulty five, terrain of five. Did, did you have any five fives you talked about last night? Um, I'm, I don't know. We didn't really talk about levels about so the much. About uh -huh. Yeah, diffi like thing, repelling and I, some of these had to have been five fives because, I mean, one guy climbed a 75 foot tower just to get these uh, really <laughs> beautiful boxes. With you know, if, you, if you're joining us for the first time, we, we talk about geocaching a lot because it's a very popular have a hobby all around the world and it's particularly useful for RVers because you can dial it up or dial it down meaning that if you're uh, in an RVing or camping situation you're looking for a fun activity uh, whatever age or skill gr uh, group you have you can find a geocache that will work well for that group. You can have something of moderate uh, uh, terrain, moderate difficulty, maybe if you have younger members uh, in your party if you've got young adventuresome uh, Courtney types that'll, that'll just scale mountains and swim rivers, uh, then there's uh, challenges for them as well to, you know, to make it interesting. And uh, it's a great hobby for RVers because there are uh, over a million and a half of these uh, treasures distributed uh, all throughout the world. And you're never, ever more than a very short distance away from a geocache that you need to find. Mm -hmm. Very good description. And you gave me a lot of credit there. I don't know if I would do all those things, but maybe I would. would. Maybe uh, you would, yes. <laughs> today, uh, we are ex other things that we're going to be posting this week are um, we've got some gadget plugs, Tales from the Road, some What's Wrong Is This Picture. Again, subscribe to those shows and you'll be notified when they're up. Uh, we were going to be having some new programming coming through, so just be uh, alert to that. Taping this uh, recording this week, of course, uh, today we had live. Uh, to this afternoon, we've got an episode of RV Capital Talk, which will be yep. posted this week. And then Friday, uh, we've got a really neat show. And Andy, I've, I brought up this website because we are going to be joined by Elizabeth. And uh, some of you may be actually familiar with Elizabeth from uh, Delight delightfullytacky.com and the reason I say that is she's more into the uh, design and vintage clothes okay. and, and cool stuff like that. Sure, so go ahead and yes there's there's the website. There's the website um, and she 
is from Alaska, took her vintage Winnebago, which she has completely done in, uh, you know, redone inside. It looks awesome. And uh, she went from Alaska all the way down the West Coast and on to Florida and then back up. So she had quite a trip. Uh, check her out, uh, DelightfullyTacky.com. We're going to have her on on Friday. Oh, and, and we'll uh, learn a little bit about uh, about the, the, the trip. And the uh, that must have been a grand adventure. How long did, does she say how long it, it took? Now you're putting me on the spot. I knew this like a week ago and I haven't gone well, back we'll to it. Yes, Friday. we'll find out we'll on Friday. We'll find out on Friday. <laughs> but... Uh, Wow, what an experience to go uh, from Alaska all the way, uh, all all the way down and across. Yeah, and, and then go back again. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't, it would probably be finding different things all the way back on on to and from. Um, and on Friday as well, we'll be taping another episode of the Arvory Capital Talk. I think Sherm just uh, wants to stick around here. I think, I think he likes so. it here. Yep, I think I think that he does. And uh, so anyway, that's uh, RV Capital Talk. Of course, is our uh, uh, RV business show uh, in conjunction with RVBusiness.com. So it uh, looks like a uh, fun and busy week, and uh, time to roll out on a pretty interesting uh, geocache radar. Hey, it's Geocache Radar, episode GCRD 109-3. Today's cache is near Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. While in the area, you could go to Old Scotland Yard, offering an 18-hole miniature golf course that's fun for all ages. Dramatic landscaping and beautiful waterfalls complement the entire site. Or you could head to Kings Gap State Park, which offers a panoramic view of the Cumberland Valley and includes over 2,500 acres of forest on South Mountain in central Pennsylvania. Or take in the Antique Automobile Club of America Museum with highly detailed dioramas which present original and restored vintage vehicles in elaborate scenes that bring the history of the automobile to life. It's all within easy driving distance of today's cache. Today's cache is cache number GC1WHQ6. It's difficulty of three and a terrain of 2.5. It's the Dykeman Walking Trail, located in the Dykeman Spring Wetland Park. Multiple trails to this spot, none of them requiring bushwhacking. There's a large rusty piece of junk near the cords of this guy. It is not, repeat not, part of the cache. Bring your own pencil and pair of tweezers, you're going to need them, but it's a four ribbon favorite. North 40 degrees, 2 minutes, west 77 degrees, 31 minutes. For full details, go to geocaching.com, the official global GPS geocache hunt site. For show notes on this cache, rvnewsnet.com forward slash geocache radar. Information is believed to be valid at the time of production, but conditions may change. Use common sense and caution and do not trespass. Keep geocaching a fun and family RV activity. Geocache Radar is a production of RV News Net and RV and TV and is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. I love that thing where it talks about bring your tweezers. Yeah. Uh, all a part of the uh, the uh, kit bag that you might say mm -hmm. that uh, some of the so the hardcore geocachers have 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 tool bags of stuff that they that they take along and pack in because uh, there's a lot of planning that's uh, involved in uh, in going after some of the more elusive uh, caches. But uh, anyway, fun time. Absolutely. That seems like a fun one. And of course, do not repeat. Do not. Touch the, the rusty pieces around it are not a part that's, of the cache. That's right. And the first rule, poke it with a stick. Poke it with a stick. Hey, we gave away a eye pole last night. Oh, that's right. So Native Texan was a, the big winner winner. So congratulations to her. But we gave away another eye pole from a fastcap.com. So that was a, it was a good show last night. Lots of fun. Yep. Uh, I think that's about it for today. Of course, uh, we'll be back on Friday with uh, Elizabeth from Delightfully Tacky. I'm Courtney Wallen. Yep. And uh, Andy McCaskey from RVN TV. Thanks for joining us here on RVN Live. Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of unbiased reports and reviews about service companies in your area. Whether you're looking for a roofer, plumber, house cleaner, dentist, or even a doctor, Angie's List members share their experiences with each other so that you can choose the service company that's right for your job. Companies can't pay to be on Angie's List, and the reviews come from people just like you who have had experience with the companies mentioned. To find out more, go to rvnn.tv and click on the Angie's List ad.